nouveau. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. Just think how of oh, many things have I said. Yep. Yep. Just all your friends. Yep. <laughs> Hello. No. Nope. Hello. And welcome back to my series on ways to keep yourself entertained and feel productive when in isolation. If you have seen video one or two, you may go ahead and skip the intro to whatever I tell you to in the description box to get right to the good stuff. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, then please continue to watch. Hello and welcome back to How to Hen. We have taken a break from our regularly scheduled programming, which usually includes me rambling on about anything hen party wedding related and or burning myself with hot glue. Ah, burning myself again. Because today we're talking about something that doesn't just affect brides and hens, it affects the whole world. Ah yes, coronavirus. Ooh. Or COVID-19, I should say, call it by its proper name. Oh, it doesn't deserve that respect, damn it. COVID-19 has meant that a lot of people are in isolation at home because they are self-isolating, they're working from home, or they are in lockdown, which a lot of countries at this moment are. What this has meant is that some people are going a little bit stir crazy because they can't get outside or they can't go far and they can't do all the things that they would normally do. They're getting bored, which increases anxiety and stress stress and worry and all that stuff, which is not what we want. So I've decided to use this weird old idea making brain of mine to come up with some stuff that you can do from the comfort and safety of your own home to keep you occupied. When I say occupied, the things that I'm going to suggest to you will be a selection of things that will be household organisational stuff that will help you feel productive, some things that will help you be creative, some stuff that is good for self-development and educating yourself, learning new things, and some stuff that is just, well, it's just fun because, you know, I'm not your mother, I'm not here to preach to you, do what you want, you're your own person. Every couple of videos, at least one thing that you can do to socialise in isolation. Socialize in isolation. Socialize in isolation. Some things though never change. I still have a cocktail because if not now, then when? Really? I mean really. As always, if you'd like to see how I made my cocktail and what goes into it, then you can check out my Instagram at how to hen. It features in the stories every time before I make a video. On to the idea. Number one, move some furniture or change the layout of your room. Do you see what I did there? I am in a new environment. This is a new layout. Isn't it new and refreshing? This is exactly what you could feel if you moved around some stuff in your house. So no matter how big a place you live in, if you are able to move some furniture, then move it. Turn your sofas so that they are not facing the TV and they are facing out the window instead. Move your bed against the wall or away from the wall. Just any small thing that you can do to make the house feel like it's not the same house that you have been in for the past two weeks will be good for your mental health. It will make you feel rejuvenated and give you a break. Give you a break from looking at the same four walls. Something as small as turning the angle of your coffee table, swapping some of the pictures you have on your wall. Doesn't matter if you can change something, anything, change it. Number two, if moving some of your furniture around just hasn't quite done it for you, then go ahead and crack out the paint and paint. Yep, you can either choose to paint an entire room or get a bold colour and paint a feature wall. You could also do geometric patterns, cool sort of like abstract murals. On the blog post that I have on www.howtohead.com, I have a link to some inspiration of some really cool feature walls that you can do just with some tape and a nice colour of paint that suits the rest of your living room. We recently did this. We rent where we are and we've been here for two years and we avoided painting any of the walls. But when we set up my How to Hen office downstairs, I decided let's just do it. And we painted a dark grey feature wall that is going to be my How to Hen command centre for all of my organizing and general life stuff. So as you can see, all of our walls are white, but if we zoom around to our little how to hen workstation, hey, I think there's where I sit, and then there's where my husband sits. I have the bigger desk. So this wall is the wall that we feature painted very recently, and doesn't it make such a difference? Like that was just white before, and the white space was just a bit blah. So what we're going to have is we're gonna have a plexiglass wall calendar up here, sort of perspex wall calendar. This is my temporary wall calendar, which you will see in the video that I've posted before of how I organize my life. So a nicer version of that is going to go up there, along with some ways to file. 
A lick of paint will really spruce up a room and it will make the room that you are so sick of looking at something nice to be in. Number three, design yourself a fashion line. It doesn't have to be a whole fashion line, you could just sketch one outfit. But you know, if you have some time and you are of a creative nature, or even if you're not, try sketching out some stuff that inspires you or some outfits that you've thought, I would love to find something like this. If you're anything like me, sometimes when you go shopping, you think, oh, this is sort of what I'm looking for, but I wish it had a different kind of sleeve or I wish it fitted differently or the pattern was different or whatever. Bring those visions and those thoughts that you have to life. You could even make it more interesting by doing it as a group challenge with your friends and saying, okay, why don't we all design something that fits this brief? So it could be, you know, what if it was Game of Thrones, but 21st century or modern Disney. Or if you want to be relevant and on trend seems like a bad word for this trend, then you could design a fashion line inspired by, maybe not necessarily by coronavirus, but by the healthcare professionals like these drawings that I did today to illustrate what I mean. They are very rough sketches, please don't judge me, but it's amazing what you can do with rubber gloves and face masks and also maybe those little hair nets. Um, our healthcare professionals have to wear. I do not sew or dress make, so I have no idea how wearable or makeable any of these things are, but it doesn't matter because it's an exercise in fun and creativity. So go out there and draw something. Let's see what kind of crazy outfits you can make. Number four. Try cake decorating. Now, this isolation period seems to have brought the inner baker out in everyone, so this might be something that you're doing already. That's fine. If you're making cakes already, go for it, fine. You don't have to listen to this bit. But if you're not, you can try your hand at baking, or if baking is already something you're good at, but decorating is something that maybe lets you down, then focus on that bit. Just make a bunch of cake. You don't really care how good they taste. What you want is to practice your decorating mastery. Make some buttercream. Maybe you could even make fondant. I don't know how you do that. Zone in on those skills and try something you've never done before. If you're already a master at buttercream and fondant, why not challenge yourself to decorate a cake entirely in chocolate? You could even do one of those like glaze cakes. Try sugar crafting. Try sponge sugar. Do not burn yourself. Take really pretty pictures of your final product that you can post on social media to make all of your friends jealous that they can come around and eat it. If you're less about baking and more about cooking, then you might want to learn how to plate anything beautifully. Maybe you make really good dishes at home, but you kind of forget about the presentation bit. You just slap it on and serve it and there we go. No, no. Now, why don't you dedicate some of your time to the art of presentation? Yep, just think how impressed all your friends will be when this quarantine is lifted and they can come on round and you can present them with something that Gordon Ramsay himself would be proud of. Number six. Now I would like to point out at this point that I uh, wrote all of these ideas down right when quarantine started. So some of them are things that people have just decided to do anyway off their own back. So, you know, don't come at me in the comments and be like, well, people have already been doing this. You're just stealing other people's ideas. No, no, I wrote all this stuff down, okay? Just, so this one, having your own silent disco. People are 100% doing that. And what's even better is there are DJs all over the world who are putting on discos on Facebook Live and Instagram, which is just great because it means everyone can join in. Yep, having a little party is easy at home because so many people are providing now. You don't even need a playlist. However, playlists are available if you have a subscription on howtohend.com. Get on a live DJ or any kind of playlist of your choice. Turn the volume right up. Try not to upset your neighbors too much. Get yourself some glow sticks, get dolled up and just dance around to your heart's content because you don't need to be in a nightclub to be in a nightclub. Have some drinks, get dressed up and just let the music take you out of this whole disastrous mess that we're in right now. Number seven, create a domino maze slash domino run. I don't own any dominoes so I'm going to post a video right now of a really cool domino run. Yep, it should be easy enough to order yourself some dominoes from any online online shop like Amazon. Other shops are available, I'm sure. Get them delivered straight to your door. Watch some tutorials. There's a whole community for this kind of stuff. You've probably watched videos like that before and said something like, wow, that must have taken ages. Or something sassy, like someone's got too much time on their hands. Well, you know, it looks like that person is you now. So invest the time in something sort of productive, but also just kind of fun. 
like learning how to set up a really cool domino run. You could make it spell out whatever you want. You could say something really nice to a grandparent or you could say something really shitty to a friend. The choice is yours. Number eight, learn some nail art. I have blank nails right now. Like. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go and try and make them look pretty. So bear with me. I have the proper stuff that you need for nail art, like the actual kits that you can buy with the little bits of tape. So I'm just gonna make my own and we'll see what happens. <coughs> Would help if you could open it. I'm right-handed, so painting with my left hand is going to be a bit of an experience. Stage one complete. That's got a sparkly bit now. So I don't have the actual thing that you're supposed to use to guard the rest of your finger. So I'm just using moshi tape. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. No, no! Ah! I don't have the patience for this. Christ almighty, I keep touching it. Let's try these little sticky bits. Ah, nope. Oh my god, I'm ruining it. I just don't wait long enough for it to dry is the problem. Okay, I've stuck it down. Let's see. Hey, this. Uh, well, now that I've successfully mangled this one. It takes so long. Why? Ah, the frustration is real. Oh, it's all <laughs> It's so bad. <laughs> oh my god. I don't hate these ones though. It did not go well. Yes, as you can see, I made a bit of a of it. What we have discovered is that I do not have the patience. I rushed these and well, you can see what happened. It's not great, but you will do better, I'm absolutely sure, because you will take your time and have the appropriate equipment and not try and use sticky tape. Also, just let things dry. Just sit on your phone in between layers for a really long time because if you don't let them dry, it ruins the whole process and you have to start again. Number nine, write a letter. Now who you write a letter or multiple letters to is your choice, but some suggestions would be to write to people like your friends, your family. You could also write to your local care home. That's a really nice gesture. There'll be lots of elderly people who are in homes just now that are really isolated. They can't see their family. Um, and they will be, you know, I'm sure a lot of them have been set up with FaceTime and things like that, but people of that generation really enjoy receiving something handwritten. Now, obviously, I don't need to point out that if you are sick in any way, shape or form, you should not be packaging anything and sending it to a care home. Don't sneeze on the letter, okay? Just make sure your hands are vigorously washed before you even use the pen. Make sure the paper is brand new and clean and hasn't been sitting around to get any dirt or dust or bacteria on it. If you think there is any possibility that you could pass something on, then maybe skip this one. But if you know that you have been self-isolated and everything in your house is definitely coronavirus free, then writing a letter to a care home is a really nice gesture. One other thing is I would suggest writing a letter to your past self and to your future self. So write down everything you would want to say to the you from, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. You pick an age where you would like to just talk to yourself and whatever you want to say, you can put it in letter form. And then once you've done that, write a letter from your now self to your future self. Pick a point later down the line where you'd like to open the letter and read it and make sure you write that date on the envelope. It's a really nice thing to look back on and this, these are some crazy times. So even if you're not keeping a diary or a journal or whatever, write down your thoughts in just one letter, seal it up, put the date on it and you can open it 10 years from now or whenever. And that'll be a really nice memory, it doesn't seem the right word, but nostalgic reminder of how bonkers this period of the world was. And it's also a nice way to put your goals and things that you want to be achieving and seeing whether or not those things do pan out in the future. Which brings us on very nicely to number 10. Make a vision board. Now there are probably a percentage of people watching who went, oh my God, my vision, really? Because you think it's a load of rubbish. And there may be a percentage of you that go, oh yeah, I've heard of those. And then there might be some of you who already have one. I have very recently created a vision board. This is the very first time I've ever done it. And I have to say, even though some of the stuff that you read about and um, being able to just manifest things that you want by looking at a board sounds bonkers, it is a bit, but just making the board itself was actually really therapeutic. It helped me figure out what I actually wanted because people think they know, oh, I'd like this or I'd like that. But when you're forced to sit down and choose images and quotes to 
to go onto a board that represent what you want to get out of your future. It's harder than it looks. It took me like a good day solid of searching for the right pictures. There are a whole load of rules on making a vision board and there are tutorials all over the internet. So just have a quick Google on how to make a vision board. Look at a few different people, look at a few different articles and you'll find a way that suits you. I made mine in Photoshop and put it as my desktop background, which is quite big on my monitor so I see it every day. It's a really great reminder of how to keep on track and I think the important thing to point out is that's how they work. It's not a case of sticking stuff onto a board, putting it on a wall, looking at it and just expecting it to fall out of the sky because you're looking at a board every day. No. The point is that when you're looking at the board every day, it's reminding you of where you're going and what you want. So every decision that you make throughout the day, if it's in front of you and it's there in your head all the time, you're more likely to make decisions and choices that guide you where you want to go. Whereas without the board, you can have a rough idea of where you want to be in your head, but it's not always there. It's not always at the forefront. You know, life gets in the way, but if you've got a board, it's physically there that you look at every day, it's just keeping you on track and reminding you. So even if you don't believe in manifestation and visualizing and connecting with the energy of the universe and all that, you don't have to. It just serves as a good reminder of where you're going and it keeps you on track and keeps you focused. So I would recommend that everyone makes a vision board to be honest. And that's it, that's today's 10. I'll post another video when I get the chance. There should be another blog appearing on uh, howtohang.com part two of the written blogs will be on there just shortly if it isn't already so go and check that out there will be a link in the description box if you've watched these videos before the outro that's coming you will have already seen so you don't have to hang about for that all of the suggestions you have seen in the video today in case you couldn't tell by how many annoying times i mentioned it are in the blog post that i wrote which is on www.howtohen.com i will put the link in the description below so you can click on that the first blog post has 25 ideas so more than what you've seen here and also links sprinkled throughout that will help you with whatever i said they would help you with when you were watching the video so go check out the blog. If you do any of these things, if you use any of these ideas, I would love to hear from you. Please, please write in the comments what you did and if it was any good or not. And if you have any other ideas that I haven't come up with yet, then please write them in there and I will add them into future blogs, future whatever this is, videos. I love hearing from you guys. And as always, it really helps my channel if you engage with the content. If you like, you share, you comment, that really helps me grow my body. On an important side note, I know that this virus and all the things that come with it are not just, you know, affecting people in the sense that they are bored and stuck at home. There are a lot of people who are dealing with the financial burdens, not knowing if they're gonna have any financial security in the next couple of months, not knowing how they're gonna keep feeding their family, a general anxiety over what the world is gonna be like when this is over. I know that it's a really serious time and these videos and these ideas are not intended to make light of anyone's situation. They are, however, a way to, if you can, take some time to distract yourself from overthinking and stressing about things that you cannot do anything to change right now, things that are out with your control. So try and take a minute to tune out of the news and turn off your social media just for a little while. Obviously you're gonna wanna keep track of everything that's happening, but the important stuff will find a way to get to you. You don't need to track it 24 hours because that's how you make yourself stressed and miserable. Trust me. So I hope that these videos can be a little bit of light relief for you. If you or anyone you know is struggling, then I will put some links both in the description box, but they are also in the blog that I was talking about earlier. Resources for people who are looking for um, financial help, people who are looking for a bit of counselling, just some advice on how to best look after your mental health, uh, etc. So they will be in the description box and also in the blog. All right, stay safe everyone, stay home. And you know, wash your wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Go now. Put your whatever you're down. Go wash your hands. Just do it because I said so. Okay. All right. Thanks. Love you. Bye.